I remember one middle school retreat we were on, and I was the tiniest, scrawniest kid in our middle school. It's hard for you to believe looking at me now, but I was this little, you know, barely, you know, making it middle schooler who was afraid for my life most of the time in high school and, and middle school era. And I remember sitting somewhere like right about where you're sitting right now, and there was somebody preaching David and Goliath. And I mean, you can preach the fire out of this passage, by the way. And if that little 14-year-old boy could take down that giant, then you. And I just thought that the guy speaking was pointing right at me when he said the you part. He said, even someone as small as you. And I was like, he's looking right at me. Like some of you think I'm looking right at you right now this whole time we've been here. I'm like, he's looking right at me. He sees me all 70 pounds of me sitting over here. And even someone as small as you can take down the giants in your life. And man, it was like someone set us on fire. We went out of that gathering that night. We were going to change and conquer the world on this particular night at this particular middle school retreat. We scoured the campground. We all went out and picked up five rocks in the campground. And we came back with them the next night to the worship service, came down front because there was something about the front of the altar. And we came down there and we just blessed and consecrated. We didn't know what that meant and rededicated and committed. And we said, we got our rocks, Lord. And we know we're small, but we're going to take down all the giants in our lives. We left that retreat. It was like, man, we were, we were bold. But you know, the, if, if we kind of fast forward a little bit, anybody at one of those, those moments in life with David and Goliath, and you're like, I can do this. If David could do it, I could do it. If a little boy can do it, I can do it. I'm going to be David in the story of David and Goliath. And then you fast forward to today, And a lot of us with what we were holding in our hand at 13 and 16 and saying, I can take it all down. Here we're fast forwarding to 26 and 46 and 66 today. And that same giant is still in our story. And the beauty of it all is that when we see in this story that God isn't looking at you today to be the hero of the story of David and Goliath. You are not David in this story. You're like, well, hello, if I'm not David, then who am I in this story? And who is David in the story? Great question. You know, the Bible, 66 books, but it's not 66 stories. It's one story. 66 books, one story, all about one name, and it is the name of Jesus. So when you read the Bible from beginning to end, you're always looking for Jesus in the story of scripture. You find him in verse one, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But you read later in Colossians and Hebrews and other places that it was Jesus who was the agent of the Trinity of God that created the heavens and the earth. So Jesus is in verse one of the Bible. When you look at the end of the Bible, you see Jesus, the lamb that was slain. You see him being worshiped and adored for the work that he's done to redeem mankind. And on every page, you're looking through the scripture for Jesus. So you come to this story, you go, well, where's Jesus in the story? It's not King Saul, he's shaking in his boots. He's not the army of Israel. They're totally afraid. He's not the Philistines. We know they don't believe in the one true God. He's certainly not Goliath. Where is Jesus in the story? Oh, hello. Jesus is the giant slayer in the story. David and Jesus are the same character in the story. Jesus is the one who comes into our valley, who comes into our stories, who comes up against our giants. And Jesus, by his power and his authority, by his life, his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension back up to a throne of power, it is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the son of the living God, who slays every single giant in our lives. He takes them all down. And when he said it is finished, he meant it is finished. Jesus is your giant slayer and he's in your valley today. 